Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great. I'm Nathan and today I want to talk to you about the latest version of my Jeskai Splashing Black Geist of St. Traff deck. But before we get started, I have a few things to say. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for taking the time to let me know that you appreciate the work I put in. This is my way of trying to do something positive for the community and you all give me hundreds of reasons to feel good about it, so thank you. A few more things. I'm going to mention Abzan or Green-Black decks a lot. I may sometimes say Ab Abzan, Jund, Green Black, but I'm really just referring to them collectively as a whole. Also, I see Abzan as being the most likely candidate for the best deck in the format, and my approach has been to start modifying the list with what is likely going to be one of our most difficult and ubiquitous matchups in mind. I want to figure out how to best combat it and then move on from there. So at the time of this recording, the bulk of my testing has been against Abzan. Also, I'm focusing on the Jeskai version that splashes black because I think Crackling Doom is that good. So I'm mainly going to focus there, but the information is relevant even for the straight Jeskai version. Lastly, the metagame is pretty wide open. I haven't been able to test the Fate Reforged cards yet, but I know that Scotty McCallum is doing that soon over at Legit MTG, so check that out. As far as Fate Reforged cards for this deck, I'm actually looking forward to testing Tassiger. I've played him once in paper for black, and it felt pretty good. He won me the game. Now, this is not a tried and battle tested list against an established metagame. It's really just my first pass on how I think the deck might need to look after a bunch of testing against Abzan. So I'm glad to be able to share what I've learned. Quick announcements. Check back soon because I'm going to be doing a versus video with my buddy Matt so that you can see the Jeskai midrange versus Azban midrange matchup in all of its glory with both hands visible for you guys to see. I'm also in touch with Vieren Horvat. He won the Grand Prix. He won Grand Prix Prague in January of 2014 with Jeskai Geist, and we're trying to line up a time for him to come and make some videos with me. Last thing, I cannot reply to some of your comments because of how your Google Plus settings are set. I'm going to include a link in the description of the video that I'm going to create uh, to try and help you guys fix that. The last person this happened to is Matt Boone. Matt, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't reply. Okay, why are we here? Dig Through Time was banned, Treasure Cruise was banned, and Birthing Pod was banned. We know the deck is going to have to change, we think Abzan is going to become more popular, we think it might be the best deck, and we think the meta is going to slow down. If you guys like this deck, you probably have a bunch of questions. What do we do? How does the list need to change? Should I even play this deck? Well, I have those questions too, and I'm going to do my best to help the community answer them. So I decided to go back. Go back to what was my favorite version of the deck, and the version I had the most success with. It's Jeskai Geist, and it's popularly known as the Team Geist version. You can see it here. This list was great for me, but when the meta shifted with the release of Cons of Tarkir, some things had to change. Jeff Hooglin splashed black for Crackling Doom, and I was a big fan of this change. Going forward, people expect Abzan to make a big impact. If that's true, I'm going to be real with you guys. Jeskai Midrange has a tough road ahead. I've been doing a lot of testing, and I can tell you, the matchup is tough. They get perfect information with their hand disruption spells, take, an take your answers to their threats, and deploy resilient, high-impact creatures and planeswalkers to follow it up. But don't despair. Part of the reason to play modern is to play decks that you like. And just because Jeskai Midrange has a tough matchup against Abzan, that doesn't mean we should abandon the deck. I'm invested in the deck, and I enjoy playing it. Abzan may remain a tough matchup, but I'm going to do my part to help improve it as much as I can. There are also other members of the community who like Jeskai Midrange, and I encourage you to seek out the opinions of Jason Clark, Scotty McCallum, and Larry Swayze. Jeff Hoagland has also done some work with the deck, but I don't think he wants to cast Geist in an Azman-dominated metagame. So like I said, going back. I started with the Team Geist list because it served me so well in the past. Even though we lose our utility lands, I want to keep the Black Splash, so let's take a look at it. Here it is. Now, I think Crackling Doom is worth it. It eases the demands on our path to exiles, it's perfectly on plan with Geist, and it gives the deck an ability to interact with other decks that it lacked in the past. Also, because of its unique wording, Crackling Doom often acts as targeted removal, killing the biggest threat on the table. Now, as I said, we lose Ghost Quarters, and it's possible that the number of man lands that the green-black decks run will necessitate some land destruction, but I'm not convinced of that. Unfortunately, 
The green black the green black decks do bring in fulminator mages on top of tectonic edge, and giving them a single black source in play does open up a possible way to disrupt this deck. But mostly, I think they're interested in hitting celestial colonnade. That being said, let's go over the rest of the deck. 25 lands is mandatory, not only because we need to hit three lands, but because we're running multiple five drops. Part of the reason for two five drops is that we want to draw into spells that can either win or close out the game, plus improving our top decks is one of the ways that we beat the Abzan decks. I think a four of Path to Exile is mandatory. With Abzan having so many creatures with the toughness of four or greater, it's important to have as many ways to deal with them as possible, especially if we have to fight through their hand disruption. Plus, running four paths just gives you as many ways as possible to make a path for Geist of St. Traft. Also, I think four Lightning Bolt is mandatory. While not the all-star against Abzan that it can be against other decks, bolting the face of an opponent that does do damage to themselves is one path to victory, and it's great that one of our win conditions is also a control card when the deck needs to operate in that mode. Remand really shines with Geist of St. Traft. It's a great tempo play prior to Geist coming down, and it helps ensure that the board is clear when he does. In a deck like this with many redundant spells, it keeps the velocity up by helping us find more of them, and it's also great later in the game when, Snaz ca when Snapcaster Mage helps you cast it again to protect Geist of St. Traft or keep them from playing a blocker. I will say this, as good as Remand is, if the meta becomes saturated with Obzan decks as it was with Delver and Pod, it may be worth looking towards some number of mana leaks because outside of Lingering Souls, I don't think Remand is great in the Obzan matchup. Snapcaster Mage is an all-star and one of the reasons to play the deck. He's our primary source of card advantage and he does a great job of buying back spells to make way for Geist of St. Traft. He is also a decent source of early damage against decks that we want to get hyper-aggressive against. Four of, no question. Lightning Helix is a six-point life swing when it hits the dome, and like Bolt, it's simultaneously a win condition and a removal spell. It's one of the core pieces to the strategy of the deck. As far as the number to run, the usual rule is four, but it actually isn't the best versus Obzan. Their creatures are too large, and if you're on the four-color version, the list is pretty tight. Later, I'm going to go over a few configuration options, so I'll talk more about this then. Now, Vendillion Click took a backseat to Avon Mind Sensor when Pod was the number one deck, and when there was so much Blue Red Delver that we weren't able to get much value out of it. But now that things have changed, it might be a good time for this powerful Flash Flyer to come back. Click is an instant speed threat that if unanswered can fly in for a good amount of damage and has the upside of disrupting your opponent's hand while providing you with great information. It's best against control and combo decks, and while I'm not sure it's the best card in the slot right now, and it remains to be seen if Fate Reforged offers us anything as an alternative, but for now I can't think of anything better. Against Obzan, it can surprise the Liliana after they've plussed her, but unfortunately it matches up pretty poorly against Lingering Souls. Geist of St. Traft is the powerful card the deck is built around. If a path can be cleared for him, he will quickly end the game. Very few decks main deck ways to get rid of him, and at worst he's an overcosted Boros charm. There are games that Geist will get you a free win simply because your opponent cannot deal with him, and he's great against almost any deck running a combination of blue and red. Electrolyze is one of the best spells in the Jeskai arsenal. When it's good, it's nearly a 3 for 1. Getting rid of two of your opponent's cards while replacing itself. When it's bad, it's still a 2 damage burn spell that keeps velocity up by drawing a card. It doesn't kill the primary threats in the Abzan matchup, but it does take care of the Lingering Souls tokens, which is a good reason to keep it in. Now, Crackling Doom is the primary reason for the Black Splash in this deck, and while it may seem odd to splash black for only a few cards, the effect is very powerful. Abzan is the kind of deck that makes relying on Lightning Bolt for removal seem pretty poor. Nearly all of their threats have more than four toughness, and they have more of them than we have Path to Exiles. Crackling Doom really helps that problem by acting like targeted removal for their biggest guy, and it will also occasionally kill a creature while simultaneously killing a Liliana of the Veil. Restoration Angel has a number of favorable targets to blink in this deck. You can buy more value out of Snapcaster Mage or Vendillion Click, save a guys from suiciding himself into a Tarmogoyf, or blink a Thunderbolt Hellkite to take care of additional Lingering Souls tokens. On her own, she's a great surprise blocker and is another good damage instant speed threat 
that is resilient to lightning bolt and abrupt decay. Finishing up the main deck, we have our five drops. Thundermaw, Hellkite, and Batter Skull. Thundermaw is great as a finisher, and unless he's killed, he's always going to get in for five. He will take care of those pesky Lingering Souls tokens to make sure that they can't erase him. And if required, he can also block a Siege Rhino in many sizes of Tarmogoyf. Now, one thing to be aware of is if they cast Lingering Souls, after you cast the big guy, he will be unable to punch through the tokens without help from Restoration Angel. Now, Storm with Dragon doesn't have this problem, but it also doesn't kill the Lingering Souls tokens. Since these decks are so adept at trading resources with one another, it's important to find ways to gain edges, and Thundermaw does this for us. He gives us a body while cleaning up the card previously cast by our opponent, and for that, he gets my nod over Storm Breath. Lastly is Batter Skull. Good on offense, good on defense, good on a Snapcaster Mage, and absolutely ridiculous on a Geist of St. Traft. This card has the ability to win a game all by itself, and we also run just enough creatures to make the equip feature a viable upside. If I was running the three color deck, I would strongly consider a Moreland Haunt because being able to make a guy from a guy that's already dead when a batter skull is lying around is a pretty good upside. Okay, so that's the main deck. Let's talk about the sideboard. One thing, I'm working on an ultimate Jeskai mid-range sideboarding guide. So to keep this video down in length, I'm not going to mention every deck that has a particular card that is good against it, but I'll try to hit the major ones. All right, I want to mention two cards together because they give the sideboard such great versatility, and in many ways they function as catch-alls for things you didn't expect. That's Wear Tear and Engineered Explosives. Against known decks, Wear Tear is good in the Affinity matchup, Boggles, Splinter Twin, and against Storm. It's an answer to things like Choke, Blood Moon, Batter Skull, and I guarantee you will come across some deck you have never seen before, and you will be glad to have this spell in your sideboard. Whether or not we bring this in against Obzan depends on how many chokes they do or don't play. Engineered Explosives is similar in that it can take care of things you do not expect. Also, after extensive testing, I cannot understate how important this card is in the Obzan matchup. It takes care of everything, and it is often your best way to clean up an army of Lingering Souls tokens. The reason it's so good is that it's adaptable to many different board states. At zero, it kills Lingering Souls. At two, it kills Dark Confidant, Tarmogoyf, and Scavenging News. At three, it kills Corsair, Liliana, and Choke. And if you're playing four colors, it can even kill a Rhino. We want this versus Obzan, Jund, Tokens, The Mirror, Affinity, Zoo, Infect, Boggles, and Merfolk. Relic of Progenitus is also good in the Obzan matchup. It can shrink its Harmogoyf, gets rid of targets for scavenging news, and can stop them from flashing back a Lingering Souls. It also gives the deck an important way to interact with dedicated graveyard-based decks, and the draw ability can help you hit land drops or find answers. We want to side this in versus Obzan. Blue decks with Snapcaster Mage, Living End, Storm, Jund, Dredgevind, and Assault Loam. Celestial Purge is another versatile sideboard card. In the Obzan matchup, it can take care of both Liliana and Siege Rhino, and if they're running Dark Confidant, it kills him as well. There are also other good targets in the format, like Blood Moon, Koranos, Pyromancer's Ascension, Soren, and Splinter Twin, just to name a few. Counterflux is good against control and combo decks, but we also bring it in in any matchup that benefits from hard counters. We win it versus Storm, Scapeshift, Control, Burn, Amulet of Vigor, and through the Breach decks. We may even want it against the Obzan decks as well. Now, the third Crackling Doom is in the side. This comes in versus the Mirror, Obzan, Jund, Zoo, Affinity, Infect, Boggles, Amulet of Vigor, Tron, really any deck with big or hard to interact with creatures. Wrath of God is the sweeper of choice because of the regeneration clause, but a strong case can be made for Supreme Verdict if you expect a lot of Merfolk. You want this versus Obzan, Zoo, Infect, Boggles, Tokens, Merfolk, and the Mirror. Slaughter Games is a card I'm still unsure of. It's great against Scapeshift because there is nothing they can do to stop it, and it takes Scapeshift. It also isn't bad versus Tron. I'd bring this in against Storm, Ad Nauseam, Amulet of Vigor, combo, through the breach decks, and anything you can punish by taking a known card, a known key card. We also have a Koranos. This comes in against any matchup that is likely to be long. It's a win condition and a source of card advantage. It's difficult for decks to remove. We want it in all of the green-black matchups against Control and Splinter Twin. Lastly is what is really a flex slot. 
I'm not sure what I want here. It could be a negate. It could be another Celestial Purge. It could be a Stormbreath Dragon for decks that rely heavily on Path to Exile. Maybe it's this Blood Baron. Maybe it's a Worm Coil Engine because that card is sweet. Shatterstorm, another Wrath, some Burn Hate. I'm not sure. We'll have a better idea as the meta shakes out. I've also been testing Sora of Temptation in the Junk matchup, but I'm not sold on it. I think we just want to be more proactive, but it's been interesting. Also, a word of caution. Leyline of Sanctity is not good. I tried it. Sure, blinking their discard is great, but when it comes back to clunk up your draw steps, you're going to be sad. Also, if you side in three Leylines and then draw a reasonable seven, you're going to be forced to keep that seven, and you're likely going to draw into an annoying and dead Leyline later down the road. They take up too much sideboard space, they're awful top decks, and they do nothing in multiples. Leyline is better in decks that need to protect themselves so they can combo off or win in a hurry. Leave it for them. Now with regard to possible configuration changes. I've tested cutting one Helix, one Remand, and adding in two Mana Leaks. Mana Leak is better versus Obzan, and I like having a hard no sometimes. I've also tested cutting a Remand and or a Helix for the third click. These changes are small, and it's hard to say which is best. I will say that Leak is definitely better than Remand in the Obzan matchup, so that's something to consider. There is also Tassiger, like I mentioned in the video. I can see replacing the two of Click, but a lot of testing still needs to be done there. So why would you want to play this deck, or even straight Jeskai, with no Black Splash? A lot of it is a preference thing. If you just want to play the best deck in the format, this might not be it. The Abzan matchup is in their favor, and while I think we can improve it, I don't think we can improve it to the point that it's strongly in our favor. That being said, the deck has a reasonable game against basically everything. It's a fun deck to play, it's very interactive, and it can really straddle the line between control and aggro, and it rewards skilled play. Also, geisting people is fun. People will tell you he's bad because everything blocks him, and then tilt when you jam him on the table because they can't deal with him. Lastly, anyone who tells you that Jeskai Midrange is a bad deck is wrong. It's a fair and solid midrange deck, and if you have luck on your side, it has enough power to go all the way at a major event. For me, I play Jeskai Midrange because I like casting Geist, I like all of the spells, and I think it's a fun deck to play. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will of course continue working on this deck, and I'm also curious to see what the guys over at Legit MTG are doing with the straight Jeskai version. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts, so please comment. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, please consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Draw well and smash face.